the, the word life has a different meaning because there's the novel, and then we find out that there's something beyond the novel in the credit sequence. And, and even though we know that those are outtakes from the book, that 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 go beyond, and that that now we're beginning the end of the book rather than the end of the novel. To the, a character like Biff von Rheingold, and some of these characters that turn away and they look as if their act is coming out of them, even though we don't see that Big Frank is um, is named someone else. It's Big Frank as Big Frank. It's Biff von Rheingold as Biff von Rheingold. But are they really? in some other reality as well. And then came life, is what comes after that word life, the real life of a different kind of book. Is, for example, uh, when I was talking with this actress today, uh, Jackie O'Shaughnessy, uh, she was talking about the importance of being an actor and coming into a scene and out of a scene, if, even if you're only in for five seconds, that your character has to be coming from somewhere and going from somewhere. And I said that other actors have told me that it's important to know that even if you're a background character, that uh, you may be a background character in the film or the TV show that you appear in, but the minute you walk off screen, you have to believe that there's a camera following you as a character and you're the star of a totally different film that just happened to intersect the film that you're watching. And so in here, and then came life, is uh, when we get the characters uh, in the credit sequences, doing these outtakes, it could be that there's a different bit Ron Reingold and a different Paulie Maravelli and a different Big Frank Concetto that live totally different lives from that which I have put in my books. And maybe and maybe some other author, for example, will take Big Frank Concetto or Bit Von Reingold and use them the way that I use Jim Hawkins or Ann Shirley or Tom Sawyer. Yeah. Uh, it also, it must be from Stardust Memories, this idea eventually came uh, because of how there's the outer film to it. Um, but it, it's used in a much more effective manner, I think, that film, that the, the characterization of all of the characters is so deep that to be, to be revealed at the end that they're disassociated from that or seemingly disassociated from their characters it comes as a makes you rethink everything that came before with this credit sequence while at the same time playing perfectly within the structure of the novel. Uh, did you have, did you have any thoughts about that? And was Stardust memories also in the back of your mind throughout this last sequence? Actually not because Stardust memories in, I mean, while it's a great film and I think, it's, you know, arguably one of Woody's best, if not the best, um, I was actually, there have been other works where I was actually thinking more along the line of uh, some of the 60s films uh, like, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Godard's Contempt or some of Bergman's Persona where, uh, you know, you get you get, get the artifice that we're watching a film at the end and then something's walking away. But I wanted to have, I wanted to have the characters more even directly address it than just being seen, you know, doing outtakes. And of course, there's the modern co co convention of a lot of films that do in the credit sequences end with, you know, outtakes and certainly DVD uh, versions of films where you get the outtakes. And since I have intermissions and I have trailers uh, and teaser trailers uh, that started, I wanted to sort of mimic that. Um, and so the last, the last, the, uh, scene that is seen is again uh uh the rowing thing here and you know it ends with uh, uh the life raft started taking on water and so we see that instead of rowing back as at the end of the novel like coming to to an end that big frank seems to be being aborted as his raft is sinking and and he's sinking into the water uh and you know this is the symbolism of water is the feminine. Big Frank now is is hip deep in, in the water. He's stuck off the thing here. And, you know, you know, uh, I, I yelled cut. Several assistants saw the life preserver to Big Frank, who held on to it and swum toward us, still laughing. As he got closer, he said to me, he's still laughing, hey, Danny boy, is this really the end? And so it ends with the character that that is at the cusp of the end of the novel, basically turning to the presumed writer, me, 
uh, and asking if this really ends, which gets back to the Con Evil uh, ELP song lyric, you know, the, the welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, because, you know, it, there's this Mobius strip quality of this one book, but it's also in, within the larger Mobius strip, as you'll see if, when you read the, six, the book 64, of the whole New York Quartet, which in itself is subsumed into the larger Schneider verse of fiction, which is part of, of my, all of my writing, whether it's essays on cosmoetic or my poetry, which is a part of me, the, the, the writer and the creator. I, I am the, the god that has made these little characters do stuff. And so here you have Big Frank or a version You have another level too, Dan, because of the public domain material that it's in the larger world of, of literature. Yeah. And uh, it, it works well to that too, where this book is connected to outer universes that have nothing to do with your universe. Yeah, I mean, there's there's like uh, the thing, uh, I think there was a show called Saint Elsewhere in America in the 80s, where I, I saw a thing, there's a, a meme that goes around that all of American television is just a dream of this child that died on an episode of Saint Elsewhere, because they're, they're <laughs> interconnected characters, and he, he somehow has dreamt of some of them or whatnot. So in, in a certain sense, yes, but... Uh, in a certain sense, no, too, because obviously my Tom Sawyer is just a variation of the original Tom Sawyer. Even when I have pull him out and give him a little extra dimension that someone like Twain could never have thought of, uh, you know, but nonetheless, I, I know what you're saying there. <laughs>